the nightly business report good evening tonight imf spokesperson says that sri lanka's program is giving results and the next review and program discussions will take place after a new government is formed after elections Minister of Foreign Affairs and Justice Ali Sabri announces that Sri Lanka will lift all vehicle import bans and restrictions by February next year. The Colombo Stock Exchange closed a highly volatile week marked by two days of gains, two days of losses and one day of mixed sentiment reflecting a balance of optimism and caution in the market. And the European Central Bank cuts deposit rate amid slowing inflation and economic growth. Good evening and thank you for joining us. International Monetary Fund spokesperson said that Sri Lanka's program is giving results and the next review and program discussions will take place after a new government is formed after elections. Meanwhile, the Cabinet of Ministers has approved the IMF proposal based on Sri Lanka government's proposal to reduce pay tax from next year. She mentioned that the IMF's position what they see is a program that has made significant achievements Kosak said this without specifically revealing whether the framework was within the debt sustainability assessment or not. She also added that as mentioned in a press release during the timing of the third review, the timing of the third review will be discussed with the government following the elections. In the debt restructuring negotiations and discussions, those negotiations are between the member country and its creditors with the IMF making an overall assessment of debt sustainability. Meanwhile, at a press briefing today, Minister Bandulu Gunavardhana stated that the proposal to reduce the pay-as-you-earn tax will be included in the next budget proposals in November this year. He stated that the government had submitted the relevant proposal to the International Monetary Fund and obtained its approval. Under the proposal, the pay tax for individuals with a monthly income of 150,000 rupees will be reduced from 3,000 rupees to 2,500. Similarly, the tax for those earning 300,000 per month will decrease from 7,000 rupees to 3,500 rupees. Meanwhile, an individual earning a monthly income of 450,000 rupees is currently required to pay a tax of 76,000 rupees, while this will be reduced by 12,000 rupees to 63,500 rupees. Minister of Foreign Affairs and Justice Ali Sabri has announced that Sri Lanka will lift all vehicle import bans and restrictions by February next year, marking a significant shift in the country's economic policy. Sri Lanka introduced stringent import restrictions on numerous goods, including a complete ban on vehicle imports, following a severe foreign exchange crisis in 2022. This move was intended to safeguard the country's dwindling forex reserves at the time. In a post on X, Minister Sabri emphasized that with the substantial improvement in foreign reserves and the strengthening of the rupee, the Cabinet of Ministers has decided to lift all the vehicle bans and restrictions by February next year. He stated that this decision is a part of the ongoing efforts to restore normalcy in the economy and address the needs of the public. Last month, President Ranil Vikramasinghe indicated that vehicle imports would resume in stages by 2025 as the country relies heavily on the revenue from custom duties. He further explained that while the government is still waiting for reserves to fully recover, progress has been made and the resumption of vehicle imports will be essential for generating the much-needed revenue next year. Power and Energy Minister Kanchana Vijay Sekara said that Sri Lanka's Cabinet of Ministers has approved proposals for a separate energy sector regulator, revisal of CADA and new salary structure for the state-run Ceylon Electricity Board and the Ceylon Petroleum Corporation. Today, Minister Vijay Sekara announced that the Cabinet has approved several significant proposals. These include the establishment of a separate regulator for the energy sector, a revision of the cadre within the state-run electricity board and Ceylon Petroleum Corporation, and a new salary structure for these organizations as well as the Ceylon Petroleum Storage Terminals Limited. The new energy regulator will be responsible for overseeing oil and gas pricing and setting standards based on recommendations from an expert committee. Cabinet spokesman Minister Bandulu Gunavardhana confirmed on Tuesday that the Cabinet has also approved the drafting of the legislation to establish this petroleum regulator. The move follows the formation of the committee on the 25th of April this year, tasked with studying the regulation of various petroleum-related sectors, including liquefied petroleum and lubricating oils. The committee has supported the creation of a new regulatory body for the petroleum industry. 
The Supreme Court today issued an order directing the Controller General of Immigration and Emigration to appear before the court in person for his failure to implement the Supreme Court's order, which had suspended the Cabinet decision granting approval related to online and expat visa operations in Sri Lanka. The Supreme Court has ordered to file contempt of court charges against the Controller General of Immigration and Emigration for failing to obey the court's interim order to suspend the implementation of the electronic visa system. The order was delivered today by a three-member judge bench comprising Justice Preeti Padman Surasena, Kumudini Vikramasinghe and Achala Vengampule. The court also ordered the petitioning party to draft the charges and present it before the court on the 25th of September. Earlier today, the Supreme Court had directed the Controller General of the Immigration and Immigration to appear before the court in person with regard to his failure to implement the order issued by the court over the electronic visa matter. On the 2nd of August this year, the Supreme Court issued an interim order suspending the contract given to the private consortium IVS, GBS and VFS Global to operate the visa issuance. Let's take a short break now. This is the Nightly Business Report. Welcome back to the Nightly Business Report. The Colombo Stock Exchange showed resilience today, closing in the green after a day of mixed sentiment. Both indices posted gains, surprising market observers and signalling a positive shift amidst recent fluctuations. To get today's market update, we connect Vinodini Rajapupati from First Capital Holdings. Thank you. The ASB experienced a strong bullish sentiment from the start of the trading session closing the week at 10,683 with a notable gain of 116 points. This rise was driven by momentum in the banking sector and high-cap companies with leading contributors being Commercial Bank, Sampath Bank, HNB, LOLC Holdings and Hamas Holdings. Most sectors saw price gains across the board, which was further supported by increased participation from high net worth investors. The S&P SL20 index also recorded a positive move, climbing 54 points to close at 2,980, marking a strong end to the week's market performance. Meanwhile, the market turnover reached 1.2 billion rupees, marking a 38.7% increase from the monthly average. The capital goods sector accounted for 36% of the total turnover, whilst the banking, food, beverage and tobacco sectors jointly contributed 43% to the total turnover. Moreover, foreign investors remain net buyers, recording a net inflow of 80.4 million rupees for the day. The top gainers for the day were Blue Diamonds Jewelry Voting, Softlogic Finance, East West Properties, Asia Asset Finance Voting and Millennium Housing Developers. Meanwhile, the top losers for the day were Tess Agro Voting, Radiant Gems International, Salon Hospitals Non-Voting, Candy Hotels Company and Softlogic Holdings Voting. The Colombo Stock Exchange closed a highly volatile week marked by two days of gains, two days of losses and one day of mixed sentiment, reflecting a balance of optimism and caution in the market. To get this week's summary, we now have Netni Fernando standing by from First Capital Holdings. Thank you. The week commenced on a negative sentiment with the ASPI recording at 10,663 backed by the uncertainty surrounding the political climate in the country. Further towards the week, the market experienced losses influenced by drastic price drops on multiple sectors whilst banking sector shares and blue chip companies further dragged the index down. However, even though the market marginally bounced back mid-week, the broad market lost its momentum. Towards the latter part of the week, the market eased on the green zone, recording at 10,683, gaining over 100 points, recording at 116, backed by revitalized interest on selected banking sector shares and blue chip companies namely Commercial Bank, Sampath Bank, Hat National Bank and Hamas Holdings PLC. Most of the sectors experienced price inclines uh, and positive invest interaction during the day. 
Turnover was recorded at LKR 1.2 billion, 38.7% higher than the monthly average of LKR 880.1 million, backed by heightened high net worth investor participation, whilst retail participation was subdued. Gold prices hit a record high in Asian trade today, buoyed by persistent speculation that the Federal Reserve will cut interest rates in the coming week, while increased safe haven demand in the face of a tight U.S. presidential election also helped. Spot gold rose 0.3% to $2,566.59 an ounce, while gold futures expiring in December rose 0.6% to $2,594.70 an ounce. Spot gold surged to a record high of $2,570.06 earlier in the session, while gold futures neared a peak of $2,600. The yellow metal shot up yesterday and today Today, tracking declines in the dollar and treasury yields as markets maintained bets on an interest rate cut despite some stronger inflation data. Gains in the yellow metal came as investors remained convinced that the Fed will cut rates when it meets next week. Oil prices continued their upward trend today, aiming for a weekly gain thanks to disruptions in U.S. Gulf of Mexico production caused by Hurricane Francine. This storm led to the evacuation of several production platforms typing supply. Brent crude futures increased by 0.53%, reaching $72.35 per barrel. Meanwhile, U.S. West Texas Intermediate Crude Futures climbed 0.58% to $69.37 per barrel. Should these gains persist, both benchmarks are set to end a series of weekly declines. This comes after Brent crude had briefly dipped below $70 per barrel on Tuesday, marking its first drop below this level since late 2021. The Sri Lankan rupee has slightly depreciated against the US dollar today, according to the data by the Central Bank of Sri Lanka. Accordingly, the buying rate of the US dollar is 296 rupees and 45 cents, while the selling rate is 305 rupees and 77 cents. The rupee has also gone through a slight depreciation against some other global currencies in the market, and now let's observe some of the exchange rates. A short break now, this is the Nightly Business Report. Welcome back to the Nightly Business Report. The highly anticipated initial public offering of LTL Holdings Limited has been postponed following the emergence of new information that was not disclosed in the company's prospectus. This announcement was given by the Colombo Stock Exchange today. In a recent circular addressed to the chief executive officers of trading participants, the Colombo Stock Exchange announced last Tuesday it received new information concerning the upcoming initial public offering of LTL Holdings. The Colombo Stock Exchange has requested that LTL Holdings provide an additional clarifications related to this newly received information, highlighting that such details should have been included in the initial prospectus. As a result, the CSC board has directed LTL Holdings to postpone the planned opening of the IPO subscription list, which was scheduled today, the 13th of September. The company is required to make an immediate announcement to the market regarding this postponement. Further updates will be provided as LTL Holdings addresses the CSC's inquiries and the review process progresses. The Colombo Stock Exchange will continue to monitor the situation and provide additional information as necessary. 
Cordelia Cruise Lines completed its second season of calls at the Hambantota International Port this month. The scheduled six visits between July and September brought in over 5,000 tourists to the country and the next season of Cordelia Cruises, which will also be six calls at the HIP, is scheduled to begin in June next year and end in September. Cordelia Cruise Lines, which offers holiday packages to both Indian and international travellers, began its cruise operations from Chennai to Sri Lanka in June last year and has since made 16 calls at Hambantota International Port. As a modern port with a depth of 17 metres, Hambantota International Port is well equipped to accommodate any cruise liner in the world. The port is fully prepared to meet the needs of crews and passengers, including customs, immigration, emigration and security services. The partnership with Haley's Adventist, the agents of Cordelia Cruise Lines, represents a significant step in positioning Hambantota as a premier cruise destination. Clarion Shipping, the agents of Cordelia Cruises in Sri Lanka, and GOL Travels Private Limited provide a variety of excursions of passengers disembarking at HIP. These include walks through the historic Gold Dutch Fort, scenic river cruises, hike to the Iluma Waterfall, visits to a local turtle hatchery, and safaris in Yala, Udavalava, and Boondara National Parks. Passengers can also enjoy trips to Unamatuna Beach and shopping opportunities in nearby areas. Anantara Kalthara Resort has taken a significant step in its support of Sri Lanka's endangered elephant population, donating a much-needed ultrasound machine to the elephant transit home in Udavalave. The specialized ultrasound machine was specifically requested by Dr. Malak Abhivardhana, the veterinary surgeon of the elephant transit home, to improve the medical care provided to injured elephants and support their rehabilitation for reintroduction into the wild. This donation was facilitated through Anantara Hotels and Resorts, Dollars for Deeds program, which is a global initiative that invites guests to support meaningful causes, with the resort matching each guest donation dollar for dollar. The Elephant Transit Home, situated within the Udavalava National Park, serves as a crucial temporary sanctuary for orphan baby elephants. The facility ensures minimal human contact to help the young elephants retain their natural instincts while providing them with a spacious, forested environment and access to the Udavalava Reservoir. After receiving care for four to five years, the elephants are released back into the wild. Notably, this transit home is the first of its kind in Asia and one of only a few globally. Anantara Kaluthara Resort is raising funds for medical equipment, elephant care, wildlife CCTV and a disease control project at the transit home. Palwatha Dairy Industries Limited recently held a press conference to highlight its reinforced commitment to safety and environmental sustainability. The company is now ISO 45001 certified, a global standard for occupational health and safety, which enhances employee safety, reduces workplace risks and fosters a zero accident culture. The certification supports leadership and employee engagement and ensures compliance with local and international regulations while focuses on preventing workplace injuries through comprehensive risk assessments. Additionally, Palwatha Dairy is advancing its environmental performance with ISO 14001 certification, which provides a structured approach to managing and reducing environmental impact. The company is dedicated to sustainability by optimizing resource use, minimizing waste and improving energy efficiency, all while integrating these practices across its operations. The company also promotes a culture of continuous improvement in food safety practices through regular assessments and audits, ensuring that the operations consistently meet international standards. The FSSC is another critical framework adopted by Palwatha Dairy, ensuring that all products meet global food safety standards. Ensuring that all the products meet global food safety standards. Let's take a short commercial break. Global business updates coming on the other side. This is the Nightly Business Report. Welcome back to the Nightly Business Report. Most Asian stocks rose today as focus turned to the Federal Reserve's first potential interest rate cut in over four years, with Hong Kong markets leading gains on bargain buying into local technology heavyweights. Japanese stocks slagged their regional peers after seeing wild swings this week amid soft inflation signals and hawkish comments from the Bank of Japan. A BOG meeting next week is also in focus. 
Hong Kong's Hang Seng Index was the best performer in Asia today, extending a rebound into a third session as traders brought into heavily discounted local internet stocks. Japan's Nikkei 225 and Topix indexes fell about 0.9% each today, lagging their regional peers. Australia's ASX 200 rose 0.3%, while South Korea's Kospi fell 0.3%. Wall Street's main indexes rose after higher-than-expected producer prices data reinforced expectations for a quarter-point rate cut by the Federal Reserve at its policy meeting next week. Wall Street's main indexes rose on Thursday after higher-than-expected producer prices data reinforced expectations for a quarter-point rate cut by the Federal Reserve at its policy meeting next week. The Dow gained more than half a percent. The S&P 500 added three-quarters of a percent, and the Nasdaq climbed one percent. Among individual movers, shares of Moderna fell more than 12 percent after the vaccine maker forecast sales that were below analysts' estimates. Kroger shares rallied more than 7 percent after the supermarket chain beat second-quarter estimates and raised the lower end of its annual sales forecast. A deal between Warner Brothers Discovery and Charter Communications sent those companies' shares up roughly 10 percent and 3.5 percent, respectively. Charter said it will provide ad-supported versions of Warner's Max and Discovery Plus streaming services. And shares of gold miners jumped as Spot Gold hit another record high. The European Central Bank lowered its deposit rate by 25 basis points to 3.5 percent in a widely predicted move. It made the cut as inflation slowed and economic growth faltered. The European Central Bank cut interest rates again on Thursday. It lowered its deposit rate by 25 basis points to 3.5 percent in a widely predicted move. It made the cut as inflation slowed and economic growth faltered. It follows up on a similar cut in June as inflation is now close to its 2% target and the domestic economy is skirting a recession. Investor attention has already shifted to what comes next. But the ECB gave no clues to its next step, even as market watchers bet on steady policy easing in the months ahead. More dovish ECB policymakers have argued recession risks are rising and high ECB rates are now restricting growth far more than needed. But inflation-wary hawks are still in a majority and they believe the labour market remains too hot for the ECB to sit back. They also argue underlying price pressures raise the risk inflation could surge again. Inflation is still only seen back at target in the second half of next year. That means few policymakers will likely argue against further easing, but the key divide is how quickly the ECB should move. Investors are also divided. Another cut by December is fully priced into financial markets, but some also see a chance of an interim move in October. That's all from us on the Nightly Business Report for this week. We will be with you next week as we'll be stepping aside for election preparations and we'll be back once Sri Lanka decides. Until then, I'm Nadi Balasurya. Thank you for watching and have a good night.